here is that these are attacks on the infrastructure which Western countries have used to supply Ukrainian military as opposed to a wider attack on Lviv right now. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that's something that the Russians have said before, something that uh, they said that foreign weapons coming into the country would be fair targets, foreign soldiers, mercenaries, as they call them, would be fair targets. Okay, so I'm trying to do this video, um, which I initially didn't know I would be doing a video, but um, I need to show you how this. I was in the process of working on um, this next journal, which is the promises of God to the chosen ones, right? And so one of the scriptures that I'm dealing with, I'm still in the, I'm at the, like the last of the well, I'm just what the last of the Old Testament scriptures before I go into all of the New Testament Testament ones, and so I'm uh, I was working on Jeremiah chapter one verse four through nineteen. It was like way too big, right? So I caught myself trying to narrow it down, and I'm looking at so I'm looking at it intently, right, to see okay what verses can I pull out so that I can get this on here. And the more I looked at it, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so I need to share this. Um, I, I started writing and I'm like, my, my spirit in me was jumping. Like I could not uh, be still enough to write this, to type this out. I'm like, no, I got to do a video. I got to get this out so that I can then go back and try to write. I got to like get this out of me. So, um, Jeremiah chapter 1 is a verse that um, you're pretty much familiar with. You know, that's the one where God uh, had called Jeremiah. And he said to Jeremiah, he said, um, look, I've known you. How, I got it right here in front of me. He said, uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Like, before I formed you, I knew you. So we know this verse, right? Um but that's not the part that I want to focus on. It's something else that God was saying in the process of calling Jeremiah. And I'm looking at it and it's very applicable for today. Like it is for real for today. And so, so the first part, because Jeremiah, God spoke to him several times. So we're going to look at the first one. We're going to get the first one out the way because everybody know this one. It says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, before I formed you in the womb, before, like, like you got to understand, you got to catch this now. Okay. Um, for a child to come to be, there is a man and a woman that has to come together, a man and a woman that has to come together for this child to come to be. You under, do you understand? Well, of course you understand. So, um, in our society, in our society, the child that, that um, comes into this world is not always the product of a husband and a wife. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. Some children come to be from parents who were not married at all. Some children come to be from adulterous situations. Some children come to be from uh, situations of fornication. Some come from situations of rape. But, and I'm saying that to say this, no matter how the situation came to pass that the child began to form in the womb. God said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And listen, 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 because this is not about um, whether or not a person committed adultery, fornication, whether it was raped. This is not about that because listen, Jesus, oh, I love it. Jesus, um, father, his for real father, was not married to Mary. Do you understand? Jesus' life 
was put into the womb of a virgin. Okay? So Joseph was his stepdaddy. It was not he was not his birth daddy. Y'all y'all catch me, y'all follow me, flow with me with that. Okay, so he says, Before I formed you, before I formed you in the womb. So I'm about to say this, and I'm about to say this like one more time. It doesn't matter how the life of the child came to be growing in that womb in the mother's womb who put it there who ordained for it to be there was god almighty he said i knew you before i formed you in the womb in other words i had to know i had to make the decision of who your mama was going to be and who your daddy was going to be and and i knew that i foreknew that before you was in the womb before you was formed. okay it says uh, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations before you were born. <laughs> before you were, that is so significant. But this is not even the part that I want to, to harp on or, or, or like focus on. Verse 6, alas, sovereign Lord. Now, now here's Jeremiah speaking. Alas, sovereign Lord. I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Okay. Hey, Moses did it. I did it. <laughs> but the Lord said to me, this is verse 7, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. I love it. I love it. I love that. I love that. It says, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Remember, Jeremiah said, I'm too young. I can't speak. I don't know how to speak. I'm not trained to be as eloquent a preacher and a, a exalter. Like, like I, I can't do it. I'm too young. God said, don't look. Don't even say that. What I tell you to say, you're going to say. It says, then he reached out and touched his hand with his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today day not tomorrow today i appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot now when you uproot imagine pulling weeds in a garden pulling stuff out to uproot to tear down imagine taking stuff apart that like like redoing a garden and replanting when things have died you got to pull it out and, and tear stuff apart and break stuff he says i have appointed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow that all that has to be done first why because there has to be a cleansing that has to happen first the uprooting the tearing down the destroying and the overflow i mean um yeah overthrowing has to happen first before the rebuilding and the planning it says and to build and to plant so he he has given him the um, authority he appointed him over nations and kingdoms to uproot tear down destroy overthrow to build and plant the word of the lord came to me this is verse 11 now this is what we need to start paying attention even more so verse 11 what do you see jeremiah i see the branch of an almond tree i replied the branch, 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 not the whole tree, but the branch. I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Bam. First thing, keep note, pay attention, hear this, catch 
God said he is watching to pay attention that his word is fulfilled. His word, everything that is written in God's word. God says that his word that goes forth from his mouth will not return to him void, but it will do, it shall do all for which it was sent, right? So that's why we pray God's word because God's word is going to come to pass. He said, I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Okay, so now take note. Verse 13, the word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting toward us from the north. Bam, right here. This is what caused me caused me to stop and do this video. I see a pot that is boiling. Have you ever watched a pot of water boiling or a pot of food? I made some, um, ooh, what do you call those, those beans? Uh, oh gosh, I can't even think of the name of those beans. They, they were black eyed peas, but they were mixed like with tomatoes and whatever. But anyway, um, I had put them in a pot and turned the pot on. And so it was boiling, right? And it was like, blah, 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 blah. like it was, it was, wow. so there's some craziness that's going on. My, my fingers is the, the bubbly part of it when it's boiling, right? There's some craziness going on. He sees a pot that is boiling, not simmering, not simmering not hot and smoking but boiling like when it's boiling when when you put um pot in the water to boil it bubbles or when you put like milk in the in the pot say you're going to drink some hot chocolate and you put milk in the pot if you're not paying attention to it and it begins to bubble it'll overflow it'll bubble up and it'll rise up and overflow he said i see a pot that is boiling but he didn't stop there he says it is tilting toward us from the north. There is a pot boiling. It is tilting toward us. Where is the location? From the north. Get a map. Get a map. Pull a map out. Get a map. Pull it up on your computer. Um, I tried to do this the last time <laughs> with the map and... The phone cut off with the video. I'm on my computer here. Okay, so over here, this map here, this blue map here. Um, we down here somewhere. We we uh I'm not gonna worry about where we are at this moment. Um I'll show y'all. This is Africa. This is Africa right here. Okay, I'm gonna do this one first. This is Africa right here. All right. That orange spot right there, I need something where I can point to it. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to use, I'm going to do several maps, but I'm going to start here. This is Africa. This here. That orange spot right there is Ukraine. You see that orange spot? That orange spot is Ukraine. You see that little piece right there? That is Florida. This is all the United States right here. That's Florida right there. So if you know what Florida is, you know where you are looking at this. This is Florida right here. That's Mexico. This is Africa. That's Ukraine. This Africa, this little part right here where I got the point, the point of this, that's, that's Egypt. This little area right here along that, that orange part, I mean that, that blue part there, this little area right here because this is the Mediterranean Sea so this little area right here is where Israel is. This over here is Asia, Russia okay, so in the Bible so let's go over to this map because this is a little bigger move my little mouse out the way so I quit bumping it okay, so this one is a little bigger so here is Egypt, right here. And here is Israel, right here. To the north of Israel, which is, okay, so it's pointing this way for north. It's pointing this way for north. So to the north of Israel, which is up here, this way, you have Ukraine, but you also have Russia. You see what says Russia? 
So that's to the north of Israel. So he said, I see a pot that's boiling. That's what he said. And it's tilting. Let me get back, pull that scripture back up. He said, I see a pot that is boiling and it's tilting toward us from the north. Now, the reason he would say it's tilting toward us, if Russia is up here, can y'all see where I'm pointing? If Russia is right here, which it is, you see where it says Russia. Russia is right here and Ukraine is right here and they are fighting Ukraine. Israel's right here. So there is this a, it's a pot that's boiling and this tilting toward us. He's here. And he see it. Now he doesn't know about it. Back then, it was, probably wasn't even called Ukraine. They changed their name so much. They they changed names so much. So it probably wasn't even called Ukraine back then. But this he just saw it tilting toward them. And so that's what's happening now right now in the news that's why when i read this i'm like wait a minute wait a minute i need to share this i need people to see this and look at this listen listen back in what well, no, i'm not going to go there i'm not going to go there i'm not going to go there um so he says uh this is verse 13 jeremiah chapter 1 the Lord said, came to me again what do you see jeremiah answers i see a pot that is boiling it is tilting toward us from the north. Okay, that's Russia. The Lord said to me, this is verse 14. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. From the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. You guys are angry. Everybody's angry about what is happening, but God is getting ready to say why. He's going to tell you why it's happening for us now. I do, I'm going to write this down real quick so I don't forget us. Ezekiel 9. Okay. All right. So let me go back to here and finish with this. And then I'm going to tell you about us as we see this, what we're supposed to do. Verse 14, the Lord said to me, from the north, Russia is the north. Russia is to the north. We are to the south. United States is to the south. In Daniel, when you read in Daniel about this struggle between the north and the south, the kings of the north and the kings of the south. Now, just now, here's, here's where it gets thrown off about us. We are called North America, right? We're called North America, right? But look. Just because we're called North America don't mean that we're to the north, that we're the kings of the north. Or however, we are the kings of the south because it was all about Israel and it was all about Jerusalem. And it was so, so the Bible, when it was written, they were the center location, Israel, Jerusalem, Judah. That was the center right there. And so everything to the north of them or to the south of them, right? You got to think of where the Bible writer was when he was writing. So Jeremiah saw this boiling happening to the north and it was pouring towards them. He it, it, it wasn't necessarily meant for them, was it? Like their argument, their fight is with Ukraine. I, I have to go and do some research to see like how Ukraine fits in the picture. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not about to do that right now. I, like I'm not f feeling led to research any of that. But when I saw this and in comparison to everything that's going on, I knew I needed to share this. So the Lord said to me, and I, I can only pray that this information reaches Anyone who is connected to Ukraine, anyone who is connected to um, uh, Israel, like like uh, Judah, the, these tribes that's over there, anybody, I'm, I pray that you hear that this gets to you in some type of way, that you hear this, that you go back and look at it and then pay attention to what God is saying to do. He's telling us what he tells us. He says in Amos, he says that he won't do a thing. I think it's Amos chapter 3, verse 7 or verse 9. He says he won't do a thing without first telling 
his servants, the prophets. He said he won't do nothing without first telling his servants, the prophets. And the reason why is because the warning goes first, because here's the deal. God don't want to destroy anybody. He doesn't. His desire is that we all attain to repentance. That's his desire, right? So listen to this. this is, again, this is Jeremiah. Please listen. It says, the Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. We see this stuff happening today. It says, I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. I'm going to read that again. I am about to. He said he's getting. Whenever we say we're about to do something, we're basically saying we're getting ready to do something. That means that, look, we need to act now. We need to act now. It says, um, I am, verse 15, Jeremiah chapter 1, I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. The kings, listen now, listen, listen. The kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surrounding walls and against all all the towns of Judah, I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made. Okay, so here's the deal. For those in Ukraine, I don't know what you guys do. I don't know what you all are doing. I have absolutely no idea what your beliefs are, how you've been operating. I don't know. Only you guys know. You know. You know individually. You know collectively how, how you guys have been operating before you came into all of this that's going on now, which brought you to the forefront of all of our news stations and got everybody like watching and reacting and feeling some type of way. Only you guys know. Only you all know. This is what the Lord said. He said. The kings, I'm, I'm going to go back up. Verse 15, I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem represents the place of worship. Okay, Jerusalem represents the place of worship. It says they will come against all her surrounding walls. And against all the towns of Judah, I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of, he's telling us why, this is verse 16, Jeremiah chapter 1. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness and forsaking me and in burning incense to other gods and in worshiping what their hands have made and in worshiping what their hands have made. Verse 17, get yourself ready. He's telling us now, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. All right. Do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. He's telling Jeremiah, what I'm about to tell you, you need to speak to the people. What I am about to tell you, you need to warn them. He already told Ezekiel, if I give you a warning and you don't give it, they're going to die for their sins, but you're going to be held accountable. So the same thing with Jeremiah or any person who is called to speak prophetically for the Lord. If God is giving you something and it's, and he's like, his spirit is bearing witness with you, and then you need to speak. What he said, same reason why I'm sitting here doing this video. Like this was not what I was looking for. I was working on something else works in my hand. That's why I <laughs> looked at that twice. He says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, 
the kings of Judah do that. We're talking about those who are in positions of authority. It's officials, it's priests, and all the people of the land. The kings of Judah, it's officials. You got to understand, Judah was told that the scepter would not depart from him until the one who um, it was supposed to be given to, which was King Jesus. So, um, uh, king means government. You talking about kings, leaders, right? That's government. But you also or officials and, and princes and so forth. And, but you're also talking about the pastoral, the priest, because he is our high priest. King Jesus is our high priest. So Judah represents those who are in positions of leadership, whether it's governmental leadership or whether it's pastoral leadership. It says, Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, the whole land against the kings of Judah. We're talking about our, our governmental and our pastoral, those who are in positions of leadership. It's officials, it's priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I'm with you to rescue you, declares the Lord. Now, that part he was talking to Jeremiah, and that part he is talking to anybody who he is calling to speak and, and speak what he said. He said, get, get yourself ready. Stand up and say whatever I tell you to. But it's this part here that I really want to focus on. He's saying why this stuff is happening. He's saying, see, he asked Jeremiah, he said, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see a boiling pot. Do I need to go in the kitchen and, and put something on so it could boil so you could see how how violent that is the the when it's boiling, not simmering, because when it's simmering, it's not violent. But when it's something is truly boiling, that's a violent action, right? That's a very violent action, and we see that happening today. Jeremiah said, "I see a boiling pot, and it's tilting toward us from the north." Jeremiah was in Israel. He was in one of those Israelite or or Judy was in one of those lands. Um, one of those areas that was governed by, by the Israelites, and he saw something from the north, okay? That application today would be Russia tilting towards, and he said it was tilting towards us. He didn't mention, he didn't, he didn't see Ukraine. He didn't see, like, and he didn't say, okay, I see Russia and Ukraine. All he saw was something from the north tilting toward us and Ukraine is right above Russia and God just said you saw correct God told him from the north disaster will be poured out on all from the north he's telling him and then he said why Verse 16, I'm pronouncing my judgments. Now, y'all get mad and upset and people are, are um, protesting and walking out on jobs. But look, has anybody yet stopped to figure out why this stuff is happening? We're so busy looking across the board. Has anybody been telling you guys, like opening up God's word to you and showing you what? So now let me show you this real quick since I'm here. Dang, I should have pulled out my Bible, but I'm just going to do it this way. Um, Ezekiel chapter 9 is what I'm about to show you now since I already went over time. So Ezekiel chapter 9 is what I'm about to show you. And um, the reason why I'm about to show you this is because Ezekiel saw something. Is it 9? Is it 9? Yes. Ezekiel saw he 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 was well in Ezekiel chapter eight God took him and by spirit he took him and he took him to Jerusalem and he moved back walls to show him the different things that was happening and he was like okay let me show you this side okay let me show you this side all right let me show you this side and so when he did that in chapter nine of Ezekiel, the next thing you know, Ezekiel, he is standing with the Lord and, and he hears a voice says, bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city. Bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city, each with a weapon in his hand. He saw six men coming. But then there was another one with him. But the other one didn't look like the, the first six. The other one was dressed in linen with an ink horn. Linen with an ink horn. 
And he told that one dressed in linen with the ink on, he said, go and mark on the foreheads those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. This is verse number four. God told Ezekiel that. He said, I mean, God God told the, the um, man that was clothed in linen with a writing kit at his side. This is somebody that's writing, right? He says, go throughout the city of Jerusalem. Remember I told y'all Jerusalem represents the place of worship. It says, and put a mark on the foreheads. When you mark somebody in the forehead, now you got them thinking about it. Thinking about, you know, again, our writings, stuff that you're reading, the videos that we're doing. He says, put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. These six, right? Let's see, which way did they go? Oh. Oh. Let me go back. Let me go back. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city, each with a weapon in his hand. So these ones who are getting ready to execute judgment, they were appointed by God. They were given the authority to do so by God. Verse two, and I saw six men, six represents gross imperfection, right? I saw six men coming from, or six represents imperfection. I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north. They were coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north. So if the upper gate faces north and they were coming from that direction, they were coming from the north. Y'all catching me? Who's north? Russia is north. It says... As far as what's going on today, Russia is to the north. It says, um, with them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Okay, so now, I just wanted to see that when I saw the direction, like, this is important. It says, now the glory of God of Israel, of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of all those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. He's telling them to start at my house. Start at my house first. You're going to start in um, the, the, the government. You're going to start in the church. You're going to start at my house first. He says, slaughter the old men, the young men and women, the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing, I was left alone. I fell face down, crying out. Alas, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire realm in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? He answered me. The Lord answered him. Now that all of that is key because like I'm doing these prayer, prayer journals, right? And I get and I'm creating these prayer journals, right? So it says he answered me. God answers. He does answer. He said the sin of the people of Israel and Judah. Israel represents all of God's people as a whole. Judah represents those who are in positions of leadership, the governmental as well as the pastoral. Um, it says the sin of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is 
full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say the Lord has forsaken the land the Lord does not see. So I will not look on them with pity or spare them. But I will bring down on their own heads what they have done. Then the man in linen, then the man in linen with the writing kit at his side brought back words saying, I have done as you commanded. What was key in all of this was that at the time that this was going on and when Ezekiel began to see it, he fell face down. He humbled himself face down and he began to cry out. So he humbled himself and prayed and he sought an answer from the Lord. He, he cried out a last sovereign Lord. So now he's praying to God. And here's his question. Are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in the outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? In other words, you 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 upset with the leaders. You upset because listen, this book here, Iron Sharpens Iron. In this book, I expose the fact that it is the sins of the priesthood and the sins of the or the sins of the pastoral the priest the past because i don't want to hit nobody saying you know if it's priest you're talking about catholicism no baby i'm talking about everybody in religion it is the sins of the religious leaders let me put it like that and the sins of the government that will bring a plague on all the people i'm gonna say it again it is the sins of the religious leaders and the sins of the government that will bring a plague on the people as a whole. So Ezekiel, when he saw everything happening, he hit his knees. He covered his face and he cried out at last, oh sovereign Lord, will you destroy the entire remnant of Israel? Remember, Israel represents all. All of the nation. He said, are you going to destroy everybody because you're mad at Judah? He said, he said, well, not Judah, but Jews. He says, will you destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath upon Jerusalem? Place of worship. His house. His house. God said, he answered. Remember, he said in, in Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, um, chapter seven, he said, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that's what Ezekiel did. He fell down and he covered his his face. If they will humble themselves, if they will pray, alas, oh sovereign Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus, right? Um, but Jesus had not yet come at that time. They had." direct communication they 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 he said a last so sovereign Lord. he said if they would seek my face so he now asked god a question are you going to destroy everybody you you mad at them but you're going to make us all okay boy you're going to destroy everybody and god answered and he said, if we would turn from our wicked ways, in other words, when God tells us what to do, when we seek his face and he give us an answer, we need to do what he say do. He answered, God answered, he said, the sin of the people of Israel and Judah, not or, and, that means both of them, the people as a whole, as well as the leadership. Because look, when the leadership sins, they cause the people to sin. When the leadership sins, they cause the people to sin. The minute we get to groaning, the minute we get to talking about leadership, the minute we get to groaning, talking about leadership, we're sinning. The sins of the leadership causes the people to sin. You don't believe me. It's all in Leviticus, and I broke it down in this book. Iron sharpens iron. Um, he said the sin of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. He didn't say it was great. He said it is exceedingly, exceedingly great. Like, like greater than great. It's exceedingly great. He says the land is 
full of bloodshed. And the city is full of injustice. They say the Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord don't see. People think God ain't watching. He ain't watching. He ain't paying attention. I can do whatever I want to do. They don't even think about what they do. And when they do whatever they do, they don't think that God is seeing them. It says, at the point of this, while this, this was happening, when God was speaking this, the man clothed and then he came back and said, I've done as you commanded. God told us what to do. He told us what to do. This is my last thing I'm about to share with y'all. He told us what to do. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7. Y'all know the verse. It's verse number 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, he says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. That's the last part of it. We, we know how to humble ourselves. We know to hit our knees, cover our face, and, 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 and recognize that we are nothing in comparison to God. We're nothing. We need him. We need him. His breath, his exhalation is our breath we need him he sustains us all we are nothing humble ourselves before him he is sovereign pray cry out to him pray seek his face question him he'll answer he says call to me ask of me and i will show you great and unsearchable things it's jeremiah 33 3 Call to him. He says the fourth thing, and this is the part that we need to do now. This is the part where we at, what we need to do. He say, and turn from your wicked way. When you turn from something, you regret it and you stop doing it and you repent of it. You turn from your wicked way. He said, turn from our wicked way. He says, then. So we don't we we can't do one thing and think it's done. We can't do two things and, th and we got to do it in order. Because let me tell you, if you pray but you're not humble in your prayer, baby, you think your prayer is being heard. Humble yourself. We got to do it in order. The first thing is to humble ourselves. The second thing would then be to pray. The third thing would then be to ask God a question, seek his face, get an answer. I need an answer from you. Like Jeremiah, uh, not Jeremiah, like Jacob. I'm not letting go until you answer me. I'm not letting go until you bless me. I'm not letting the, the uh, angel of the Lord touch him in his hip. And he was like, I'm still not letting. He had a grip. He was like, I'm not letting go. And he got his name changed to Israel. Anyway, it says, then, so once we get all four of those things, humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Once we get all four of them, he say, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So all that that's going on, is, look, I've been saying this since COVID first came through. All of this that is going on, even with Ukraine. Same thing. It's the same thing. Humble ourselves. And this is for everybody. This is not just for the United States. This is not just for Israel. This is for Ukraine. This is for Russia. This is for everybody. Really, it's for everybody because God's word is written to his people. But when we're talking about his people, Jesus did not just come for the Israelites. Okay? He, he didn't. He said, everybody, whosoever believe, whosoever, y'all better go grab them scriptures. <laughs> you better grab them scriptures. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. He says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place 
I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you, I'm going to go on. It's verse 17, Second Chronicles chapter 7. As for you, if you walk before me faithfully as David your father did and do all I command and observe my decrees, woman, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne as covenanted with David your father. When I said, you shall never fail to have a successor to rule over Israel. That's good. This is good. It says, but if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I've given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot Israel from my land, which I have given them, and will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. I will make it a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and say, why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple? He's telling us why. It says people will answer because they have forsaken the Lord, the, the God of their ancestors who brought them out of Egypt and have embraced, embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them. That is why he brought all this disaster on them. Y'all better examine, y'all better start, examine, dig, dig into this stuff, examine it, look at stuff, for real, for real. We, in this time frame, has been taught so many lies, and we've embraced so many traditions, and this stuff has been angering God. It has been angering God. Y'all better look into it. I pray that you hear this, that you hear this. I started with Jeremiah chapter 1. I didn't know I was going to be here, but I started with Jeremiah chapter 1, read down to verse 19. From there, I went to Ezekiel chapter 7, like this, the whole chapter, and from there to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 again. Almost the whole chapter. Um, I actually started at verse 14 for 2 Chronicles, but I hope y'all catch this. I hope y'all listen. I was not looking for this. I was not looking for this, but when you're talking about the disaster that is coming from the north, it's Russia. Russia is north of Israel. That's happening right now. Catch, catch, catch. And then figure out, listen to what God is telling you to do. You and I, all of us to do. He's telling us what to do. Pay attention. All right, bye.